Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank, thanks so much for doing this. I'm really happy to be here. This has oh, been really thank you. so far. You're so nice. So. Um, <laughs> okay. So we talked the other day and we talked about your interest in, in ecology and plants mm -hmm. and your love of poppies. And I had a poppy that I showed you. I was like, look, there's a poppy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so um, I find a lot of inspiration from the natural world. Um, I do a lot of reading about ecology and botany and things like that. And um, it definitely overflows into the stuff that I make. Um, and recently I've been doing a lot of linoleum block prints and um, focusing a lot on botany and insects and um, landscapes of the Southwest. So that's what I've been up to recently. So the bandana that we looked at a minute ago that uh, a friend of mine just won, um, that is done with those block prints, am I right? Yeah, yeah. so I, um, I hand carve all of the linoleum block prints and then I print them and I actually have a demo set up I could show I you. I would love to see a demo, let's do it. Okay, okay cool. so here's, um, I can show you some of the finished block prints um, they end up yeah. looking like this, and um, then they're inked, and then they're stamped onto fabric or paper, and to create them. Um, and you I carved usually, those guys. Those are your designs that you carved. Yeah, so yeah. they're all hand carved. So um, I actually have a, a block print I've been working on. This is a bristle cone pine landscape. I don't know if you guys can see it. I, yeah, we can see that we can okay. see the lines. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I um, I draw it all out first and then I use these tools that um, they're linoleum cutting tools mm -hmm. and I actually um, like will cut out. So you you gouge the linoleum like this mm -hmm. and then um, the areas that you cut out will be white and the areas that you leave will be black. So you kind of have to think in reverse when you do the cutting. So um, that's why it's really helpful to draw it out first. So that's kind of the process of the cutting. That makes sense. Um, and yeah. then this, this tool that you're using, I've seen them before. They look like a weird little cupped blade. So it like scoops the linoleum out in a way. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of different ones. This one's um, pretty small. So this gets in those like really tiny detail. Oh, right. um, you can get different sizes. Uh, and then this one's actually where you, you actually push it. And this one is a pull gouge. Oh so you God. pull it towards you. So there's different ones you can use. Um, I never these are just the ones they would be directional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's lots of different cutting tools. Um, oh, cool. For sort of different textures and like thicknesses of line and things like that. So amazing. Yeah. Cool. That's, That's really neat. Um, can we see one of the finished prints that you have so we can see like what this would become if you stamped it onto something? Yeah, so um, this is actually uh, one of the blocks that I um, that I use for the prints that I have available. Awesome. Um, this is from the Laguna Mountains is in eastern um, San Diego County. And um, I've been doing prints on paper, but then uh, I've been experimenting a lot with printing on fabric too. So here's a, a print on paper. So okay. as you can see, it's like the same, but it's actually a mirror image. A mirror, um, yeah, and then like, it's like a reverse yeah. too, sort of like a negative for film, right? Exactly, yeah. it's a lot like a negative for film. So it, it flips the image uh, basically backwards and it's also reversed from like black to white. So there's a lot of like, you know, tricky thinking you have to do when you, <laughs> Yeah, have to get in the hang of it. Um, so there's a there's a paper print, and then I also have been making these. Um, prints oh, that's so that fun! Hanging, I love like that's ready. It's ready to hang too. You can put that right <laughs> up on your wall. Yeah, so you don't need to like put it in a frame or anything. It just hangs from it a dowel. It is its own a... frame. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. Um, did you have a demo show up, set up to show us the stamping process? I do. So Yay. I'd love to see that. Cool. So um, we already saw the chrysanthemum bandana and I have one that I've sort of been working on here. Oh, lovely. And, um, and then if, I'm, actually, if mm -hmm. I'm right, 
I think what we'd said was that this is the one that's going to the winner, correct? Uh, yeah, when this one is done, this will be the bandana. See it be born, guys. <laughs> be created. So um, the process is uh, pretty fun. You use this thing called a brayer. So it basically rolls an even layer of ink onto this brayer. And um, as you can see, I like to mix my colors. I don't usually just use like a straight green out of the tube. Mm -hmm. um, just to make it look a little bit more natural. So um, here's our leaf uh, little stamp. And then um, you make sure to roll an even layer. Can you see? Okay, yeah. We can see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not sure where my phone is. Pointing. It's so cool to see the scale of it too, like to see like how delicately you have to apply these. Yeah, and then um, you have to apply pressure, not too much but not too little either right and pretty consistently across the whole leaf i'm sure mm -hmm. yeah. and then make sure that it doesn't smear when you pick it up and there you oh, go look at that so oh how beautiful that looks great thanks so that's the process behind the behind the lino cut bandanas and the prints and all that jazz that's great so okay real quick question um you have a two color one there. Not all of your work's two color. Some of it's black on whatever color the bandana mm -hmm. is. But mm -hmm. in the case of this particular one, the the flowers, you have to let those completely dry before you mm -hmm. can go ahead and move on to the step where you're putting the leaves on, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the ones that have multiple colors have a lot of different steps. So mm -hmm. you do the um, the first color you choose. So I, I usually do the red uh, chrysanthemums first. Mm -hmm. And that's... Um, that's this one right here. Oh, cool. And um, yeah, and then once those are all dry, um, then I can like work in and put the leaves on there and it won't smear or anything like that. So well, it looks gorgeous. And I'm sure it takes a while to get the hang of like applying that pressure so evenly and like not having it smear. That takes mm -hmm. a delicate hand and a lot of concentration. Yeah, I've messed a lot of them up, to be honest. So it's yeah, it's been a learning process. <laughs> That happens with my ceramics too. I always have like, I don't know, like a 10% of them are just kind of like, okay, this is mine or family members. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting practice in sort of like letting go because, you know, with art, there's always that, that uh, chance, you know, that mm -hmm. it might not work out. So with these, like, it's been an exercise in patience and also just being okay with, um, with being like, oh, you know, this one's not gonna go out and that's okay. And I can use it for other things. Or I was thinking of actually using all the, the misprints and making like a big quilt or something with them. Oh, like, neat. Reuse them, so. I love that idea. That would be so fun. It would be like um, like the mishap quilt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of your products that you're gonna have in the shop. So what okay. have you got? You've got the bandana you just showed us, that's in the shop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also have some more, I've been making lots of masks, um, so Perfect. folks can have uh, access to, you know, fun artistic masks, so yes. um, and, poppies, and, and then um, there's another, there's a chrysanthemum one. Oh, look, oh, that's so great. You can get one to match your bandana. Match <laughs> I've been experimenting with um, with dyes. So this is um, turmeric dyed uh, cotton, 100% cotton, and then it's printed. It's block printed with um, a sun and then some ferns. Um, supposed to represent photosynthesis, I like the sun, that. and then the plants can like absorb the light and the energy. I so. love that. And the, the natural dye is, is such a cool process too, to see the, the way, like the turmeric, we're all familiar with that. That's like this spice that is used for mm -hmm. Indian food. You purchase it and then uh, you use it once and then store it for years afterwards. But now you can yeah. use it to uh, dye some cotton yellow. Exactly. So. Yeah. So, um, um, and that one's in my shop as well. And awesome. then, it's beautiful. Uh, then, yeah, I have, um, the poppy moth, oh, um, look at that moth. and these are so you know this silk moths these are native yes. moths to um to southern california 
and they're actually very big. Um, you don't see them too much anymore, but um, they are native species. So yeah, that's another nod to na natural fibers because silk mm -hmm. moths make silk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would actually be a really cool combination to do. Yeah, a silk, moth, silk bandana. Yeah, I have ideas. <laughs> it's cool because like your artwork. It has images of the the natural things from the the studying ecology. There's times when you've applied them to create color and use them as like literally a pigment in your work. And then like it's just like this this cool. And then they're cotton, so there's also the natural fiber that is what your stuff is made out of. So tell yeah. me a little bit about how you source your materials. So I try to be pretty conscious about um, where I where I source them. All of the cotton is made in the U.S. Um, because I, uh, I've been reading a lot about like emissions and things of how supply chains get really um, complex and things are like shipped from whole countries to other countries just to get them sewn. And like, there's lots of emissions in that process. So to cut down on all of that, I, um, I purchased like bulk um, made in the USA uh, cotton, 100% cotton fabric, and then I cut and sew and dye and print it all myself. So it cuts out a lot of the, um, like the yeah. supply chain. And they're not just bandanas that are like shipped from wherever they're made here. So right, that's like 90% of the work just happens right there in your home. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the sewing machine is there. Right back. There's the sewing machine, and you were telling <laughs> me a little bit of history about the sewing machine the other day too. We were comparing sewing machines. Yeah, it was my mom's. So um, it's a pretty special uh, tool and I'm really glad to have it. Yeah, she passed away a while ago. So it's really special. I feel like um, it's an honor to be able to, you know, continue her work because she was a seamstress. So oh. it's like, it's well, really nice to be able to use her tools. Yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. I completely understand. I, we talked about this as well. I um, have that, I know that connection to working in your mm -hmm. mom's space or using your mom's tools to make things and how precious that is after they're gone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah, that's awesome. And it's a really sturdy sewing machine because they don't make them like they used to, <laughs> right? We talked about like the, yeah. the ones that are all metal, just they're all metal they're, and they're heavy, yeah. but they, they stand very, up to everything. Yeah, well, very heavy, but strong. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And then um, I forgot to ask Naza because I'm just head in the cloud. But what what's your holiday tradition that you do with your family every year? Oh me, um, we have uh, usually have a dinner together, um, which looks a little bit different this year because of uh, COVID. So we've been doing um, separate dinners, and then we drive by and say hello. So is that this was... for is this for your Christmas that you do this, or like what what holiday do you celebrate in the winter? Um, Christmas and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes this year. So we might do like drive by sort of saying hello, but uh, yeah, usually uh, usually we cook a turkey again. <laughs> nice. Two turkeys. Oh, yeah. you never have too much turkey though, right? No, no. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Patricia. I really, yeah, I really enjoy looking at your work. Do we get to see, we got to see your, your paper print of the lino, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I think so. Well, like, okay, great, cool. Because that's on that's at her shop. So these things are important. Remember, remember the products because you can buy them later. All right, thank, thank you, you, Patricia. Thank All you. Right. Hey, thanks for watching. For more videos like this, go to the link here. And to support us, you can join the Patreon by going to the link below.